Peace and Pan-Africanism, peace and Pan-Africanism. Peace and Pan-Africanism, peace and Pan-Africanism. This is your big brother, Dr. Umar Ifa Tunde Ogun. Today, I'm live and direct College Park, Atlanta, Georgia. I'm live and direct College Park. I'm feeling some kind of way right now because the airline wouldn't give me my luggage. I'm feeling some kind of way right now because the airline wouldn't give me my luggage. I'm feeling some kind of way right now because the airline wouldn't give me my luggage. So I need to go buy something to wear tomorrow. Atlanta, I've never been to your clothing stores. Atlanta, I've never been to your shopping malls. Atlanta, I've never purchased apparel in Atlanta. So here's my question. Where can I go in the morning and go buy me an outfit for tomorrow? I just need to get through tomorrow before I get on the plane to London tomorrow night. My London Africans, I'm trying to get to you. United Kingdom family, I'm trying to get on over to Europe. They keep blocking us. First it was the passport. Now it's the flight. Now it's the luggage. It's always something. But my Atlanta family, where can I buy something at? I need to go get some jeans. Dashiki, do we got any African clothing store? Who got the African clothes with the dashiki and the pants? Nothing too formal. I'm not going to no wedding. I just need to kick up a little dust tomorrow. Lenox Mall, how far is the Lenox Mall from the airport? Lenox Mall, let me see. Lenox Mall, Lenox Mall, Lenox Mall. Let me see what's up, Lenox Mall. See where that is. Lenox Mall. Lenox Square or Lenox Mall? I see a Lenox Square, 3393 Peachtree Road. Lenox Mall. Is it Lenox Square? Lenox Square or Lenox Mall? Lenox Square or Lenox Mall, y'all? It must be Lenox Square. Okay. Lenox Square. Let me see. They're going to rob me. They're not going to rob the King Kong. I fight for the people. The corner boys look out for me. Shout out to all my corner boys in every black ghetto for looking out for Dr. Umar. Whenever I pull up in the ghetto, I always get a text message from the gangs, the corner boys. They say, Dr. Umar, we got you. If you got any problems, hit this cell. We ride hard for you. I know we not doing the right thing right now, but we trying to feed our families. But if anybody mess with the Prince of Pan-Africanism, they got to see us. So the corner boys be holding me down. Okay, let's be careful about going in too hard on the corner boys because when they come to take over the hood, it's going to be the corner boys that's going to be fighting for us. The bourgeois Negroes, they live in a white neighborhood. The bourgeois Negroes, they live in a white neighborhood. Greenbrier Mall. Hold on, let me see. Lenox Square. Lenox Square. How far is Lenox Square? 22 minutes. All set. Let's go. That's 22 minutes to Lenox Square. Opens at 10 in the morning. 22 minutes. Open up at 10 in the morning. Now let me do Greenbrier. Let me do Greenbrier. Greenbrier Mall. 15 minutes away. Which one? Lenox Green Camp Creek Marketplace. Let me see. Camp Creek Marketplace. 11 minutes. That's the closest one. Camp Creek is the closest one. But I need big and tall family. I need big and tall. Do they got my size? Do they have my size? Don't send me somewhere with a bunch of little man clothes. Shout out to the little mans, but I'm not a little man. Shout out to the little mans, but I'm not a little mans. Do they got clothing for the 6'3 and up brothers? Do they got clothing for the 260 and up brothers? That's what I'm talking about. Don't send me somewhere with a bunch of small ass clothes, okay? I need that big and tall set up. I need that big and tall set up. Let me text Killer Mike. I'm gonna text my man Killer Mike. I know he know where to go. Killer Mike, wear big and tall like me. 
Killer Mike wear big and tall like me. Camp Creek got everything? I might gotta pull up the Camp Creek. He said Camp Creek got everything. He said Camp Creek got everything. I think I'm going to spawn divots. I'm hungry. I'm pissed off. I'm not on that flight to London right now. I'm hungry and I'm pissed off. I'm not on that flight to London right now. I'm hungry and I'm pissed off. I'm not on that flight to London, England right now. I think I'm going to spawn divots, Virginia Avenue pull up season. I think I'm going to spawn divots. What else is open right now, family? Killer Mike got his own shop. Killer Mike got a men's clothing shop. I got to pull up if that's the case. South Lake Mall. Y'all giving me too many options. Where's South Lake Mall at? Where's South Lake Mall? This is the Prince of Pan-Africanism. I'm in Atlanta. I miss my connection to London. But if I got to be held over anywhere, I want to be held over right here in Atlanta. If I got to be held over anywhere, I want to be held over right here in hot Atlanta, Georgia. This is a Dr. Umar city for real. This is a Dr. Umar city for real. Not healthy to eat this late after you've been in the airport in Philadelphia for eight hours. After you've been in the airport in Philadelphia, it's too late to eat. It's too late to eat after I've been in the airport for eight hours. The Waffle House is right next to Spine Divots. I need to make a decision. The Waffle House is right next to Spine Divots. I need to make a decision. The Waffle House is right next to Spine Divots. I'm not going to fault my sister Megan Thee Stallion. I'm not going to fault my sister Megan Thee Stallion for twerking for Kamala. I'm not going to fault my sister Megan Thee Stallion for twerking for Kamala. But we have to stop endorsing any politician without any concessions to the community. If they not making open promises to the black community, if they not making open promises, never settle for a secret promise from a politician. They got to say it on a microphone for the whole world to hear it. Never settle for a secret promise from the politician. I see some of my Atlanta queens in the chat. Behave, ladies. I see some of my Atlanta queens in the chat. Behave, ladies. Behave. Never let a politician give you a secret promise. Never let a politician give you a secret promise. Anything the politician offers, they must offer openly anything the politician offers they must offer openly Sarafina where you at Sarafina you from South Africa Sarafina behave ladies it's after hours ain't nothing open this time of night except the cookie jar we not going there behave ladies it's after hours ain't nothing open this time of night except the cookie jar we not going there. It's consciousness over the cookies. It's politics over the punani. It's revolution over the romance. It's institutions over the intimacy. Behave, ladies. Keep your peach cobbler to yourself. We talking politics right now. Behave, ladies. Keep your peach cobbler to yourself. We talking politics right now. Atlanta, Queens, I need you to behave. I know we got a special relationship, but my Atlanta queens, I need you to behave. Now, this is what we're going to talk about. Before I go, Spawn Divots close at 4 o'clock. It's 1.45. Do I want to make that run, family? Do I want to make that run to Spawn Divots? Waffle House. What do y'all think? What do y'all think? Spawn Divots, Waffle Okay, let's get into the politics. Let's get into the politics.
Let's get into the politics. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I have ten prophecies I want to make tonight. I'm not going to no magic city. Uh uh. You will never catch me in the strip club. I can't. I love all my queens, though. I love my sisters. I'm not judging no black woman. Okay, it's hard out here. Sister got to take care of the bills, raise the kids, handle that mortgage, the core note, the electric, the water, the gas. I'm not judging my queens. But as the prince of Pan-Africanism, I cannot be caught in Magic City or any other nude venue. So now, let me give you the prophecies of Ifa Tunde. Who ready for the 10 prophecies of Ifa Tunde? We about to go political right now. Pull up a seat, get your coffee, get your tea, get your sun chips, get your fruit, get your yogurt. We about to go political right now. I need my ladies to focus. I need my ladies to focus and we about to go political. If you trying to do a podcast interview in Atlanta tomorrow, text my cell phone. If you're trying to do a podcast interview in Atlanta tomorrow, text my cell phone, 215-989-9858, 215-989-9858, Toronto, October 5th and 6th, Costa Rica, August 16th through 18th, Nat Turner Land, August the 21st, Chicago Democratic National Convention, August the 19th. London, England, August the 11th. Dallas, Texas is possibly August the 21st. Dallas, Texas is possibly August the 21st. Okay. Shannon Sharp is in London too. Shannon Sharp. We about to get political. Okay. These are my prophecies. Y'all know I'm a prophet divinely chosen apostle of the most high God. Prophecy number one, listen up. Classes in session, listen up. Classes in session, listen up. Classes in session. Continuous bunny hopping will soon exterminate the melanated American African. Continuous bunny hopping will soon exterminate the melanated American African. The new American African will look racially ambiguous and will need identification to prove their racial identity. You're listening to the prophecies of Ifa Tunde 1 through 10. You're listening to the prophecies of Ifa Tunde 1 through 10. Prophecy number one. And these prophecies, I'm going to give you until 2050. By 2050, these 10 prophecies will exist. Prophecy number one, continuous bunny hopping will soon exterminate the melanated American African. The new American African will have very little color, if any at all. By 2050, the American African population will have very little melanin. They will look racially ambiguous and they will need identity to prove that they are black. That is the consequences of bunny hopping. That is the consequences of bunny hopping. That is the consequences of bunny hopping. Some of you sent me a photo of Bryson Brawny watching Team USA play against Jokic today. Some of y'all sent me a picture of Bryce and Bronny courtside watching Team USA take on Jokic. Y'all said, Dr. Umar, they might be bunny hopping. I'm not sure if they were bunny hopping. Those sisters may very well have a black parent. 
Those sisters may very well have a black parent. Those sisters may very well have a black parent. It's hard to tell. It's hard to tell if they're American African or racially ambiguous anymore because the bunny hopping is reducing the pigmentation in the American African community. I said the bunny hopping is reducing the pigmentation in the American African community. Oh yes, oh yes. Keep the bunny hopping up in the whole American African community is going to look like their mixed race. Keep the bunny hopping up in the entire American African community is going to look like their mixed race. Shout out to my mixed race Africans. Shout out to my mixed race Africans. You know your family to me. I'm simply talking about the destruction and the elimination and the eradication of the melanated African. They will no longer be cinnamon Africans. They will no longer be butter almond Africans. They will no longer be sweet brown sugar Africans. They will no longer be warm fudge Africans. Everybody's going to be a lemon African. In African vanilla. Y'all keep playing. There will be no more color in our community. Keep it up. Keep it up. Keep it up. Mixed race will be the new black. I told y'all that. Mixed race will be the new black. I told y'all that. Mixed race will be the new black. Is that a Caucasian calling me the N word? Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Neanderthal Nation, listen. Neanderthal Nation, if you come on my feed disrespecting me, I'm going to block you. Okay? Prophecy number two. Prophecy number two. Snow bunnies will soon control the greater share of black men's wealth in this country through marriage and divorce. By 2050, white women will control the greater share of successful black men's money through marriage and divorce settlements. Through marriage and divorce settlements. Through marriage and divorce. Black men keep bunny hopping. The white woman owns the black man's bank account. I'm going to say it again. Whether you're giving her babies, whether you put a ring on it, or whether she divorced you, all roads lead to the black man's bank account. I don't care if you give her a baby. I don't care if you put a ring on it. I don't care if y'all get a divorce. All roads lead to the black man's bank account. Though the snow bunny has been sent to infiltrate the black male kingdom and rob us of our wealth assets and money through low racial self-esteem, through low racial self-esteem, through low racial self-esteem. Y'all talking about reparations? What good are reparations if you're going to turn around and give it to the brown bunny? What good is reparations if you're going to turn around and give it to the rice bunny? What good is reparations if you're going to turn around and give it to the sand bunny? What good is reparations if you're going to turn around and give it to the salsa bunny? What good is reparations if you're going to turn around and give it to a red dot bunny? What good is reparations? What good is reparations? What good is reparations if all you're going to do is give it to the people who stole it from you in the first place? Let's go to prophecy number three of ten. Let's go to prophecy. Wait a minute. I think I'm up. Hold on one second. Hold on one second, Africans.
I'm getting a few text messages here. Podcast invites. Okay, prophecy number three. Let's get back to the prophecies of Ifa Tunde. Pre-London edition. This is the pre-London edition of the prophecies of Ifa Tunde. Once all currency becomes completely digital, there will never again be a grassroots revolutionary movement on this planet as the ability to finance off the grid struggles will be completely impossible. Digital currency is the kryptonite of revolution. Listen to me, brothers and sisters. Digital currency is the kryptonite of revolution. Once all transactions are digital, once the white power structure can see all transactions, we can never organize financially. We can never fund the revolution off the grid. We cannot go to a completely electronic platform for digital currency. I'm not against crypto. I'm not against crypto. I'm not against crypto. What I'm saying is the reason the global white power structure wants all currency to be digital the reason the power structure wants all currency to be digital so they can supervise everybody's money moves. They want to supervise everybody's money moves. They want to supervise everybody's money moves, brothers and sisters. They want to supervise everybody's money moves. So we have to make sure we keep some form of currency system that is tangible, non-digital. We must keep a non-digital, tangible form of currency. Are y'all feeling me, family? If you understand, overstand, and understand the prints right now, make some noise. If you understand, overstand, and understand what the Prince of Pan-Africanism is saying, let me know. If you understand, overstand, and understand, we cannot go to full digital currency. Full digital currency is a trap. Full digital currency is a trap. That's prophecy number three. Prophecy number four. If American Africans do not start funding HBCUs ourselves, if American Africans do not start funding HBCUs ourselves, if American Africans do not start funding HBCUs ourselves, they will soon be sued into non-existence via reverse racism lawsuits, from disingenuous applications of the 14th Amendment. Y'all do know HBCUs can no longer give preferential admission to black students. How many of y'all know that? The Supreme Court has outlawed affirmative action in college admissions. HBCUs can no longer give preferential admission to black students. HBCUs can no longer give preferential admission to black students. Do you know what that means? Do you know what that means? HBCUs can no longer give preferential admission Disgusting. 
HBCUs can no longer give preferential admission to black students or they will be sued. They will be sued by a movement called Students for Fair Admissions, a white man who is funding brown and yellow people to sue colleges they think are giving preferential admission to black students. So black America is going to have to start funding the HBCUs so they don't get sued out of existence. They are trying to sue the HBCUs out of existence. Let me say this to the divine nine. Let me talk to the black Greeks for a hot minute. I support the black Greeks. I love the black Greeks. I saw a whole army of five, five, thick in the thigh Zetas at the Philly airport the other day. I saw a whole army of five, five, thick in the thigh Zeta, five betas at the Philly. It was raining Zeta, five beta at the Philly airport the other day. It was raining five, five, thick in the thigh, sweet brown sugar, cinnamon, nutmeg, butter, almond, butter, pecan, Zeta, five beta. But this is what I want to say to the divine nine. If you really believe in the HBCUs that you graduated from, I'm talking to the divine nine. I'm talking to the divine nine. I'm talking to the divine nine. If you really believe in the HBCU legacy, all future divine nine conferences need to be held on an HBCU campus. I'm going to say it again. We got to stop being hypocrites. We got to stop being hypocrites. We got to stop being hypocrites. I'm going to say it again. If you really believe in the HBCU Zetas, if you really believe in the HBCU Deltas, if you really believe in the HBCU AKAs, if you really believe in the HBCU SG Rose, if you really believe in the HBCU Iotas, Kappas, Sigmas, Alphas, Qs, Groove Phi Groove, if you really believe, if the black Greek fraternities and sororities, if the Panhellenic Council really believes in saving the HBCU, all future HBCU conferences should be held. Excuse me. All future black Greek conferences should be held at an HBCU. Should be held at an HBCU. Do you know how much money that would bring them? Do you know how much money that would bring our HBCUs? If y'all partied on campus, met on campus, fellowship on campus, sleep on campus. Divine Nine. I'm challenging the Divine Nine to see if you're really committed to saving our HBCUs. Who's going to be the first Divine Nine to hold a conference at an HBCU? That's what I want to find out. Who's going to start the mission? Which one of the black Greek fraternities or sororities will be the first one to start this revolution? Will it be the AKAs? Some people say y'all too bougie. Will it be my Kappa brothers? Some people say y'all too pretty. Will it be the Alpha brothers? Some people say y'all too uppity. Will it be the Q dogs? Some people say y'all too hood. Who's going to be the first of the divine nine? I'm just picking with y'all family. But I do want to know who's going to be the first of the divine nine. To publicly proclaim that your next conference will be at an HBCU. You're not giving no more money to Marriott. You're not giving no more money to Sheraton. You're not giving no more money to Four Seasons. You have made up your mind that your black Greek organization will support the HBCU. Your black Greek dollars are going to the HBCU. 
who's going to be the first organization? Which one of the black Greek fraternities and sororities will be the first one to hold a conference at an HBCU? Who's going to do it first? Who's going to do it first? Or are the divine nine too bougie? Are the divine nine too uppity? Are the divine nine too elitist to hold their conferences on a black college campus. I'm waiting to see. I'm waiting to see. I'm waiting to see. Let's go back to the prophecies of Ifa today. If Donald Trump regains the presidency. If Donald Trump regains the presidency. I'm running off adrenaline right now. I'm in Atlanta. Atlanta was one of my first five cities I visited when I took over the global black power movement back in 2010. Atlanta was one of my first five cities. Let me give y'all my first five. Chicago. New York. Cleveland. Atlanta. Fort Lauderdale. I think I'm missing one. It might be the first six. It might be the first six. It might be the first six. Chicago, New York, Cleveland, Atlanta, Fort Lauderdale. That's the first five. So those cities, I didn't come to Houston until 2015, I think. I didn't hit up Houston until 2014. But once I hit up Houston, it's been a wrap ever since. I love my Houston family. I love my Houston family. I love my Houston family. I might see my Dallas family on the 24th of this month. I might see my Dallas family on the 24th of this month. Can you please get off my live with this transformer propaganda? Please, family, respect the pro Please, come on, come on. If you wanna be artificial, my brother, go be artificial. If you want to be artificial, go be artificial. Okay. If you want to be a transformer for life, go be a transformer for life. But can you please get off of my life? Can you please get off of my life? Planned Parenthood giving out hormone blockers. Do your thing, brother. Planned Parenthood is giving out hormone blockers. Go do your thing, but can you please stay off my life? I got children who follow me. They don't need to see grown men on my life pushing transformer consciousness. Okay. Let me get back to this. If Donald Trump regains the White House, police will be legally untouchable. But the migrants and the rainbow gangers will be held in check. Listen to me. Listen to me. If Donald Trump regains the White House, police will be untouchable. But migrants and rainbow gangers will be held in check. If Kamala Harris wins the White House, migrants and rainbow gangers will be legally untouchable, but the police will still get away with brutality. Which one do y'all want? Which one do y'all want? If Donald Trump wins the White House, police will be untouchable, but migrants and rainbow gangers will be held in check. If Kamala Harris wins the White House, Migrants and rainbow gangers will be untouchable and the police will still get away with murder. Which one do we want, brothers and sisters? Which one do we want, brothers and sisters? Next prophecy. Next prophecy. You said you could deal with the police but you can't deal with being homeless and gentrified out of your own community under Kamala Harris. You said you can 
You said you can evade the police, but if Kamala Harris continues to ethnically cleanse us out the black community, we will have nowhere to go. That's a good point. That's a good point. Somebody said the police are untouchable already. That's a good point. You are a recovering rainbow ganger. Congratulations, my brother. I'm glad you came back to your African ancestors. You are a recovering rainbow ganger. Congratulations, my brother. You've come back to your African consciousness. Let me go to the next prophecy. Let me go to the next prophecy. Let me go to the next prophecy. If Kamala Harris is considered black because her father is from Jamaica, Jamaica is not a race. Jamaica is a nationality. You have Chinese claiming to be Jamaican now. You have Chinese claiming to be Jamaican now. You have Chinese claiming to be Jamaican now. If Kamala Harris is considered black because her father is from Jamaica, then millions of Caribbean East Indians, listen to me, Black people better listen to me. If Kamala Harris can claim black just because her father was from Jamaica, then millions of East Indians from the Caribbean islands will come to America and also claim that they are black. If Kamala Harris can claim black because her father was from Jamaica, then millions of East Indians from the Caribbean islands will come to America, claim to be black, and they will take your scholarships. They will take your resources. They will take your social security. They will take your social services. You do know East Indians are one of the largest races in the world. Africans are number one. China and East India are running neck and neck. China and East Indians are the Asians and the East Indians. They are second only to Africans. The Asians and the East Indians, global population numbers, global population dominance. The Asians and the East Indians are second only to the Africans. If y'all make Kamala black, every East Indian in the world, especially from the Caribbean, they're going to come to black America and say, I'm black. You think the migrants are still in your resources? You think the migrants are still in your resources? Wait until Kamala Harris lets the East Indians steal your resources. Wait until Kamala the chameleon lets the East Indians start stealing our black resources. Wait until Kamala the chameleon starts letting her East Indian family steal all of black America's resources and reparations. Oh, y'all keep on playing with Kamala if y'all want. You black women, keep on playing with Kamala Harris. And when she let the East Indians in and claim they black, between them and the migrants, we're done. The migrant takeover and the Kamala Harris East Indian takeover, is going to put black America in a chokehold. I said the Kamala Harris takeover, East Indian takeover, and the migrant takeover. Next prophecy. Next prophecy. Once Hispanics clearly outnumber blacks in Chicago and New York. I'm not talking about my Latino Africans. I'm not talking about my Latino Africans. I'm not talking about my Latino Africans. I'm talking about the non-African Latinos, non-African Hispanics. Once the non-African Hispanics outnumber black people in Chicago and New York, American Africans will cease being included as people of color and we will thenceforth be completely ignored altogether. Did y'all hear what I just said? Once there are more non-African Hispanics in Chicago and New York than black people. Once there are more non-African Hispanics 
in Chicago and New York than black people. They will never mention black people again. They won't keep statistics on you. They won't talk about your police brutality. They won't talk about your school to prison pipeline. Once the non-African Hispanics outnumber us in Chicago and New York, we will become what James Baldwin called us, the invisible man. Who read James Baldwin's book, Invisible Man? James Baldwin didn't even know that he was making a prophecy. James Baldwin didn't even know that he was making a prophecy. James Baldwin didn't even know when he wrote the book, Invisible Man. I need every American African to go read Invisible Man. I need every American African to go read James Baldwin's The Invisible Man. James Baldwin was one of our greatest writers, thinkers, and social analysts. James Baldwin was one of our greatest writers, thinkers, and political analysts. No, we don't endorse his lifestyle, but we endorse his black excellence. Go read James Baldwin's Invisible Man because we are about to become the invisible people. Forget being a minority. You will not be a minority anymore. Forget being a person of color. You will not even be a person of color anymore. Forget being black American. You will not be a black, forget being a disadvantaged citizen. You will not be, you will be the invisible people. They're gonna make us invisible. Nobody will speak on you. Oh yeah. The only time they will discuss black people is when you plan in the Olympics. The only time they're going to discuss black people, I'm telling you what life will be like in 2050 if we do not wake up and smell the coffee right now. Now, for my Kamala Harris supporters, let me say this. Somebody just text my phone. It's too early in the morning for this, ladies. And because I'm in Atlanta, I'm not even sure if that's an authentic queen. So I can't even I can't even look at it because this is Atlanta. I love my Atlanta queens, but I got a lot of stuff going on down here. So I can't even I can't even uh, I can't verify the center bun. So I'm not even going to peep. I'm sorry, Atlanta, that, I love Atlanta though. I love Atlanta, but y'all got some major movements going on down here in Atlanta. So my Atlanta Queens, I can't even trip off your photos because I don't know if you've been taking them hormone blockers. You might be on them hormone blockers. So we gonna stay focused. We gonna stay focused, it's a damn shame. We gonna stay focused right now in Atlanta because I don't know what's going on. We gonna stay focused. Don't get me wrong. I know some authentic Atlanta queens, but random messages from Atlanta queens. I'm sorry, ladies. I can't take them. I cannot accept random messages from Atlanta queens because you might be. I can't do it. I can't do it. Let's stay focused to my Kamala Harris supporters. To my Kamala Harris supporters. To my an authentic big blueberry lemonade? Are there any authentic big blueberry lemonades in Hotlanta? To my Kamala Harris supporters. To my Kamala Harris supporters. To my Kamala Harris supporters. If you want me to vote for Kamala Harris, podcast interview requests, Text me at 215-989-9858. Interview needs to be in the morning or early afternoon. Text me at 215-989-9858. Interview needs to be in the morning or early afternoon. Send a deposit and we can schedule. If you want me to vote for Kamala Harris, if you want me to vote for Kamala Harris, 
If you want me to vote for Kamala Harris, do one thing and I will vote for Kamala Harris. Tell Kamala Harris to build some relevant institutions and industries in the black community before Joe Biden term ends. Tell Kamala Harris if she wants the alpha male black vote, if she wants the unapologetically African alpha male vote, if Kamala Harris wants the unapologetically African anti-snow bunny alpha male vote, build some institutions and some industries in Joe Biden's final four months of office. That's all she got to do. See, Donald Trump is not in the White House, but Kamala Harris is. Donald Trump is not in the White House, but Kamala Harris is. Donald Trump is not in the White House, but Kamala Harris is in the White House. So if she wants us to vote, she has four months to pass meaningful legislation and build relevant institutions in the black community. I'm part of the problem? Okay. Goodbye. Since I'm part of the problem, Sister Golden, you don't need to be on my life. Anybody else want to talk some shit? I can't vote for Cornell West. He's a bunny hopper. I love Cornell West. If Cornell West didn't bunny hop, if he had him a black queen, I would be voting for Cornell West. If Cornell West had a black queen, I'd be voting. But Cornell West has bunny hopped. If Kamala Harris wants the black vote, if Kamala Harris wants the black vote, do something for us these final four months of office. If you want the black vote, show us. Give us a taste of what you're going to do when you get in the White House, Mrs. Scamala Harris. Mrs. Scamala Harris. Mrs. Scamala Harris. If you want the black vote, why don't you give us a little taste of how you're going to serve black people when you get in office? You got four months to give us a taste test. Scamala Harris, you got four months to give us a taste test. Scamala Harris, you got four months to give us a taste test. Why don't you get Joe Biden to pass an anti-black hate crimes bill? Pass an anti-black hate crime bill. Can we get an anti-black hate crime bill? Can we get the George Floyd police reform bill? Can we get some industries in the black communities so our people can earn livable wage jobs? Can you stop bringing migrants into black America? You got four months, Mrs. Scamala Harris. They are taking black jobs. They are taking black jobs. I'm telling you right now. Right now. If your black child is not going to college. To be a doctor, a lawyer, an engineer. A nurse teacher, social worker. If your black child is not going to college to major in a relevant profession, they don't need to go to college. Ain't no jobs out here. You need to be saving money for your child to open up a business in the black community. 
The future for black youth will be entrepreneurship in their own community. Save the college money and use it for business development. Save your child's college tuition and flip that into a business. Did y'all hear what I said? Don't. These colleges is costing $60,000 a year. $250,000 for a bachelor's degree? Nah, I tell you what. How about a hundred grand and I'm going to set you up with some laundromats. I'm going to set you up with a fitness center. I'm going to set you up with a restaurant. I'm going to set you up with a nail salon. We ain't doing the college thing. We're going to do the black business thing. Forget college. Let's do black Wall Street. Forget college. Let's do black Wall Street. Forget college tuition. Let's do black Wall Street. You black parents better wake up. You black parents better wake up. Save the college money and buy your baby a corner store. That's right. Save that college money and buy them a corner store. Save that college money and get them a McDonald's franchise. Get them a wing stop from Rose. Y'all better stop with this high school to college pipeline. Y'all better stop with this high school to college pipeline. Y'all better get them a business. There's businesses for sale. Get them a dry cleaners. They never go broke. Get them a dry cleaners. Get them a get them a car wash. Get them a car wash. They never go broke. Y'all better keep that college money and flip it into a business. Y'all better keep that college money and flip it into a business. I'm about to start doing photography on the side. I'm about to start doing photography on the side. I'm about to start doing photography on the side. Any of my queens need a photo shoot, professional photo shoot? I'm about to be start doing photography on the... <laughs> I got a photography business. Any queens need a photo shoot? Hit King Kong for private photo shoots. All professional, ladies. All professional, though. I'm working on my photography business. Let's go to the next prophecy. Okay, listen to this one. Listen to this one. American Africans will eventually have to vacate your U.S. citizenship. American Africans will eventually have to vacate your U.S. citizenship in order to get meaningful reparations. Otherwise, your reparations petition can go no higher than the U.S. government. Are y'all listening to me? Are y'all listening to me? If you want reparations, you might have to vacate your U.S. citizenship. Reparations are for nations, not for citizens. Reparations are for nations, not for citizens. If we really want meaningful reparations, we... Oh, my God, this is disgusting. This is crazy. I blame Barack Obama for this. I really do blame Barack Obama for all of my young brothers being turned out like this. I blame Barack Obama. If Barack Obama never becomes president, this never happens. If Barack Obama never becomes president, the zest fest that has taken over young black America could never happen. If Barack Obama never became president, we would not be dealing with the zest fest to see my young brothers turned out like this. It's a damn shame. It ain't even funny. I can't even laugh. We got all these young black queens who need a good king. We got all these young black queens who need a good king. We got all these young black queens who need a good king. And all the young kings want to be queens. It's a damn shame. It's a damn shame. 
All these young sisters looking for a good husband and all the kings want to be queens. This is a damn shame. We're going to have to have a conference on this. We're going to have to stop this stuff. We're going to have to stop this. But let me get back. If we want meaningful reparations, if we want meaningful reparations, if we want meaningful reparations, we will have to vacate our American citizenship. So let me ask y'all a question, and I want y'all to be honest with me. I'm taking a poll right now. Type your answer on the live feed. I'm taking a poll right now. Type your answer on the live feed. I'm taking a poll right now. Type your answer on the live feed. Here is my question. If black America has to choose, please be honest. Please be honest. If black America has to choose between reparations and being included with white people, what do y'all think we choose? Do y'all think we vote to give up our citizenship and get our reparations? Or do you think we vote to stay American citizens and do away with their reparations. Be honest. What do y'all think? Will you please stop telling me to look up Jill Stein of the Green Party? I'm not interested in the Green Party. I'm interested in the red, black, and green party. Stop telling me about some Jill Stein, another Caucasian who ain't going to do nothing for black folks. See, the problem with y'all is you need a white savior. Black people have been so conditioned through white Jesus. We have been so conditioned through Caucasian Jesus that every time you lose a white savior, you go looking for another one. Stop bringing me white saviors. I don't want to see another white savior. Because there's no such thing as a white savior. Back to my question. I want you to type reparations or type citizenship. If black people have to vote between giving up their citizenship in order to get their reparations or giving up their reparations in order to stay amongst white people, which one do we choose? Type your answer. Type reparations or type citizenship. If you had to choose between them, they are not the same. Reparations are for citizens. Reparations, excuse me, reparations are for nations. Reparations are not for citizens. If they made you leave America to get reparations, do you take your reparations and leave America or do you vacate your reparations and keep your citizenship? I'm gonna be honest with you. I believe most black people want their citizenship. We love Caucasians. We love Caucasians. You think the black man is going to choose reparations over the snow money? You really think the black man of America is going to choose reparations over the snow bunny mafia? You're out of your mind. You're out of your mind. You're out. Of, the black man is not choosing reparations over the snow bunny. You can forget it. You can forget it. He is not giving up the snow bunny for reparations. You Negroes are delusional. You Negroes are delusional. You nigger. Do you see all the black men playing for the Olympics right now? Talking about they love America. Do you see all the black men in the Olympics running for America? Basketball for America? Break dancing for America. You think these Negroes are going to give up being an American citizen for some reparations? You think they're going to give up their snow bunny privilege? You think they're going to give up white women for rep? You're out of your mind. You're out of your mind. You people are, black men are not giving up. Black women are not giving it up. Black women is not giving.